Here on the West Coast, we have plenty of fish-filled waters to satisfy any seafood lover. However, some people are concerned that fish farms are posing a threat not only to the fishing industry, but to the environment and fish populations. Let's start the free talk. Hi, I'm Allison Riley and welcome to Free Talk. BC's fishing industry was a key contributing factor to the region's early economic development, and it continues today to be a key source of income and employment for the coastal regions. However, some people are concerned that fish farms are creating parasites and viruses that are threatening the fish population. So, Alexandra, tell me why you're so concerned about the fish farms around BC. Salmon farms break the natural laws that control disease. And so what I'm seeing, whether it's sea lice, bacteria, or viruses, is an amplification of the viruses. These farms are right on the major migration route of our wild salmon. And so our wild salmon are going through and being doused in uh, lethal pathogens. And whether I'm looking at sea lice or viruses or bacteria, there's some very serious things going on in our wild salmon, but only the ones that are going by the salmon farms. I feel that these fish farms are going to wipe the wild salmon out of British Columbia. What wild salmon do when they're sick is they die. A predator takes them out when they just start to wobble. You're on the edge of the school, you're out. Um, so that's what the wild fish are doing right now. They're trying to die off these viruses and bacteria, but they can't because these, these fish farms are like oil spills. They're, they're pathogens that are just pouring in. We've got to just turn that valve off and stop these viruses from coming into the water. And, and the, the wild fish will, will refine the balance. There might be some big die-offs with it, but we're just gonna have to let it happen. So do you, do you prefer, do you have a preference between farm fish or wild fish? Uh, yeah, I definitely do. I definitely do. I've heard uh, enough, enough stories and been familiar with enough of the research that I'm super concerned about it and the way that farms are being run right now. It's huge populations of farm salmon, up to a million per farm, dotted all the way up the migration routes, amplify these things over the winter. So the lice breed and uh, the, the viruses explode and infect more fish and explode again. And so by spring, when the juvenile wild salmon come out, instead of coming into a sea that's free of disease, they're, they're meeting the pathogens of their parents at, at an even greater scale than would ever occur in the wild. In the wild, a sick fish is taken out like that. There's a predator for every size of salmon, whether it's a grizzly bear or it's a kingfisher. Uh, the other way the pathogens get in the farms is by exotic transfer. We have brought 30 million Atlantic salmon eggs in from Washington State, from Scotland, from Ireland, from Eastern Canada. Everybody's saying, no, <laughs> there's no viruses here. No, we don't have any of those European viruses like infectious salmon anemia virus, salmon alpha virus, piscine rio virus. No, we don't have those, but I'm finding them. And the way I'm finding them is in the wild fish. And also I go to supermarkets, I buy farm salmon off the shelf and I test them. The salmon farmers won't let us go to their farms, but hey, all their fish are sitting there on ice, perfect samples. And I'm sending them to the best labs in the world, in Norway and in Eastern Canada and elsewhere. And these scientists are finding these viruses. They're sequencing them. They're saying they're 99% Norwegian strain. And yet government at the moment is in complete denial about this. Of the fish farms are, are, you know, they have to feed the world. I mean, there's a lot of people that need protein and, and fish protein. But bottom line is, is that in BC they're doing it incorrectly. They have to do it on land. One of the lies about this industry is that they're feeding the world. Uh, excuse me, no, you're not. You're going fishing in Chile, taking massive amounts of wild fish, taking massive amounts of soybeans and other uh, grain products that could, people could eat directly. You're moving them up to the northern hemisphere. You're grinding them. You're throwing them in the water. And then you're taking out less fish. That is not feeding anybody except a few shareholders. The input is... The, the input into it doesn't really equal the output that you get from it. Um, there's a lot of freshwater farming going on, like in China, with uh, carp. And it's a lot more, lot more friendly to the environment because they're herbivores, so they don't eat meat like salmon do. And uh, so it's a, it's a more sustainable practice. Now, why do you think Canada hasn't jumped on this more and kind of pulled back on the whole fish farms and the natural waters? I think a lot of it is because of what the market wants. Everybody wants BC salmon, BC wild salmon. or In 
the terrestrial situation, feedlots are behind closed doors. They're quarantined. We do not let the city's pigeons land in, in bird farms anymore because of the bird flu scare. They, they really figured that out. Uh, but in this situation, everybody's just ignoring it. It's like, oh, it's under the water, it's in the ocean. You know, we're just going to pretend this isn't happening. But people are fishing alongside of these pens. People are eating this product in the supermarket. So it's an extremely dangerous dynamic that government is just being uh, very, very irresponsible about. And now why, why do you say that government's being irresponsible? Is it regulations or in what sense? They are in complete denial that infectious salmon anemia virus has been found by one of the top labs in the world. Actually, two of the top labs, plus one of their own labs found it. And when I find one of these viruses in a supermarket, they're not checking. They're not going to the supermarket, tracing it back to the farm, figuring out where those fish came from, what hatchery, has it spread to the other farms. They're doing nothing. What happened in Chile with this infectious salmon anemia, the salmon flu, is it arrived. The fish farmer said, oh, we don't really think it's ISA. The scientist I'm using in Prince Edward Island, Dr. Fred Kabenge, he diagnosed it in Chile. He says, yeah, no, you guys have ISA. The industry then said, well, it looks like it's behaving differently. And then the next thing they said was, we had no idea it could spread so fast or become so virulent. We wish we had killed the very first farm. And the only door I can see that's available for them is just to say, you know what? We didn't know. We should have, but we didn't know. Well, they have reported finding some PCR test results that were positive, but one of the particular labs she sent these to is the OIE reference lab for infectious salmon anemia virus, and he actually wrote the requirements for confirming the presence of this virus in the fish on the farm where they came from. And so far, he has not been able to confirm any of his results. So his results actually equals ours as far as confirming for the virus and for the disease. As far as we know, right now, there are no confirmed cases in British Columbia. So anytime we think about disease, we do need to be concerned about them. We investigate them. But for the most part, what we've been able to see at this point is that the farms are not a major threat to the wild fish. And that's something we just always have to consider. But right now, it looks like we're in good shape. I mean, one of the things I saw in the Cohen Commission was a, a provincial veterinary, Dr. Gary Marty. He did the provincial health audits. and. Over a thousand times this man wrote down that he was seeing the classic lesions of infectious salmon anemia virus, the salmon flu. But then he went on to say, but it's not in British Columbia, so that can't be it. We are right there, right now. It's there. I'm finding it all over the place. There's a DFO lab, Dr. Christy Miller. She's a phenomenal woman. She's in, in DFO. She's, she's muzzled, but she's irrepressible, and she's finding it. Um, Norway, I'm sending samples to the University of Bergen, he's finding it. Uh, but the two labs that Canada depends on is saying, mm, no, we're not finding it, we don't see it. I, I don't know how that is, I don't even want to go there, but, but it's here. Now why do you think that there's uh, potentially uh, a muzzle on the DFO as far as the, the telling people about this, the situation? Uh, if ISA is really here and it's confirmed, it will close the border to trade for farm salmon. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a partnership. It's always going to be a partnership between government and corporations that are running these large operations. And the, there's a kind of a tension between the interests, right? The corporations want to run at an at a economic, you know, they want to save money where they, where they can. Uh, and uh, governments have also conflicted because they want to create jobs, but at the same time they have a duty to kind of protect the environment. And I think at the end of the day, that doesn't always translate into, into decisions that are, are great for A, the environment, and B, fish stocks sort of several years ahead of time, right? It's, it's that sort of longer term view that needs to, needs to happen. The trade partners, I don't think they've gotten the full story. I think they've been misled. And then you got to wonder about the shareholders back in Europe of these companies. Do they know that these most lethal viruses that have haunted this industry all over the world appear to be in British Columbia? Are they ready for the lawsuits? Are they ready for the reaction from First Nations? The fish farm industry has a nasty and powerful lobby. They have huge advertising budgets. They hire Hill and Knowlton. This is the same strategist company that China hired when they had the little problem in Tiananmen Square that Exxon hired when Valdez hit the rocks. Bhopal 
chemical spill happened, they hired this company. The BC fish farmers have hired the same company. Well, certainly they do poop, just like all animals. And so there are local accumulations of fish feces that do have effect on the local environment. Uh, this was explored quite closely by several different investigators during the Cohen Commission. As soon as the fish are removed, the way the farms are regulated now and positioned now, as soon as those fish are removed within a few years, all evidence on the fish on the seafloor of those fish feces is gone. Uh, my opinion on fish farms is that uh, they should be all moved onto land and out of the ocean. And why do you think that hasn't been done yet? Uh, there's a lot of people out there that just don't have the information that uh, is, is really out there. Do you think there's any possible way to have a safe, parasite-free, virus-free fish farms at all? Is there any, in your opinion, do you think there's a way of doing that? Not in the ocean. Because the ocean, there's such a free flow that the, the sea lice, the viruses are going in and out. If they want to go into tanks... I, wouldn't, I don't know why you would do that when we have these beautiful mountains and rivers and streams and, and rain systems and ocean and these, this is what really grows salmon, this coast of British Columbia and people have lost confidence in it, but I'm all about trying to turn this coast back on for salmon. Um, if you really want to go grow them in a little tank, go for it. But, you know, clean up. Make sure nothing gets into the wild fish. So after hearing this, people obviously might be a little concerned. What can people do uh, to help out or to help change things? The biggest thing you can do is, A, don't buy the product. Ask your supermarket not to put it in there. Because these viruses are in, you know, we're, we're going to supermarkets, we're buying the fish, and we're finding the virus in those fish. And I have a petition up at a change.org site. It's change.org slash salmon flu asking Costco and other Safeway and other supermarkets to stop selling diseased salmon in their supermarkets. The people have the power. People forget that. I like to tell people the power of one is all we have, but we all have it. The government has issued an inquiry into the decline of sockeye salmon in the Fraser River. It is now known as the Cohen Commission, headed by BC Supreme Court Justice Bruce Cohen. The findings of this investigation are set to be released September 30th of this year. Well, what do you think? Do you buy farm salmon? Are you concerned about fish farms? Tweet us at Free Talk TV or find us on Facebook. I'm Allison Riley, and thanks for watching Free Talk.